So thanks everybody for coming to our session on no code IoT with Zively, Heroku, and Salesforce. My name is Mario Finocchiaro. I'm the Vice President of Business Development for the Internet of Things for Zively. And we think we have a great session for you today. Before we get rolling, though, I want to introduce a couple guest speakers here. Let's see if this clicker works. I'll do it the old-fashioned way. So Callum Barnes, who'll be joining with me, who is a senior product owner from Zively, and Abe Purcell, who's the director of business development for Heroku. So we have three basic things we want to do today for all of you. First of all, we want to talk a little bit about IoT. You're all here for IoT by way of customers, talking about some companies that are getting into the IoT and why they're doing it. And second, we're going to just touch on our Zively platform, our IoT platform, and what that is and what that means. And then the cool part is going to be Callum over here is going to do a demonstration. He's going to demo using something called the Zively product simulator, which is built on Heroku, how you can build out an entire virtual end-to-end -end IoT solution, all the way from a virtual representation of a physical device, all the way out through Salesforce and apps, and build that all out in literally a matter of minutes. And we're going to have a workshop later today where you can do that for yourself, but you're going to see that demo happen. And then at the end, Abe's going to talk a little bit about Heroku's perspective on the IoT and our partnership with, uh, with Zively. Sound good? OK, so you know, what better way to kick things off in the IoT than talk about some companies that are really going after the IoT today? So if you just look over there at the IoT cabin, all the companies you see there are there now, except for Sato. They were here last year, but they're not here this year. Um, if you look at these companies that are listed here, they all have a few things in common, right? Number one, they all make physical products. Right? They all make physical products. The second thing is that they're all trying to in some way disrupt the industry that they're in by using IoT and modern technology to disrupt the industry they're in. And the third thing they all have in common is none of them are real experts in all of the back-end software infrastructure security and all of that that's required for IoT. They're great at their own businesses, but the, the rest of IoT might be alien technology for them. And that's where we help them out. So if it's you know, companies in the connected home space, like Watts Water, that has a bunch of IoT products, but one that's making a, um, a smart connected thermostat for radiant floor heating, or Lutron that's making IoT connected lights and shades, Again, what you can see over there in the IoT cabin. I won't go through all of them, but you know, SureFlap, revolutionizing pet care. And a really cool one, if you see that box over there with the mirror on the side, that shipping container? So that is Freight Farms. They make a whole self-contained, fully connected, IoT-capable farm using Salesforce, Zively, and basically that, the uh, self-enclosed um, farming enclosure there. And you know, the big brother to that guy can produce roughly the same equivalent of two acres of th like lettuce, for example, and they do it in 320 square feet. Two acres and 320 square feet. This is the little brother that's just coming out now. But that's kind of the disruption that they're creating in agriculture, smart agriculture with IoT. So if you think about it for a second, th there's, you know, I talked about th these companies having something in common. Another thing that they all have in common is that they're all embarking on this journey, right? IoT is still relatively new. It's still a very innovative space. So they're all, you know, starting. They're all getting into the IoT, which is the theme for this, this session, is starting. And if you look at what it takes to, to really launch a commercial IoT solution, right, there, there's a whole bunch of things you need. First of all, you need a business case, right? You need to, value, to find a value proposition for your customers that makes a significant difference and add value to them and to your business. But then you also start getting into the technology, you know, the hardware, the chips, the modules, the, proto the communication protocols, the back end, you know, all, the, all of that that has to be built, um, and just in the hardware, actually. But then there is the back end, there's the communication mechanism, there's the security stack, there's geo-balancing, load-balancing, all the things you have to do when you've turned yourself from a product company that sells a, a product to a 24 by 7 service provider that is now running a fully connected 24 by 7 connected business. Whole different paradigm, right? So there's all the back end you have to work on. Then there's um, app development. All these companies, their innovation is largely delivered through apps. 
very different than companies that are you know, traditionally hardware, or very strong hardware companies. Then there's um, integration into business systems. These companies are not just selling connected products, they're really running connected businesses. So what better way to run those businesses than to tie the data into business systems that are already being used to run businesses today, like Salesforce. I mentioned the apps with Heroku. And then you have to secure it all, and then the service and support piece, right? You have to develop new service and support models for being a, a full-time service provider rather than just a product company. So the way Zively helps with that is we provide a, an IoT platform that you're going to see in a minute when Callum demos it. And there's, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail here because you're going to see a lot more. But some of the basic capabilities of what you need to be able to do with an IoT platform is you need to be able to connect products. Now, it's easy to connect one, two, tens, maybe even hundreds of products. But when you're connecting thousands, tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands, and each of those products is sending a whole bunch of data back and forth, you, know, you quickly get into a situation where you're, you have to manage a huge um, you know, an infrastructure, it's a serious commitment that, that's very, very challenging to do at scale. So you have to be able to connect at scale, and then you have to be able to do it securely, right? The full security stack from secure encrypted communication from end to end to identity management so that you know when you're talking to all these different devices out in the field, you know who you're talking to and you, that that's who you want to be talking to, and if it's not, you can, you can stop it. And then there's you know, device and user management, which can range from things as simple sounding as firmware delivery, which is actually really, really important and really hard to do at scale, but you know, with, to manage devices. And then also the user identity management, which is you know, this kind of complex relationship graph of managing the relationships between users, devices, businesses. And again, having that you know, master directory of a connected business at scale Again, challenging stuff, right? Stuff that you have to get right, but doesn't necessarily add value to the, the companies that are building those out. This is back-end stuff that you have to get right. And the last part that I would talk about is just the business automation piece, right? And that's where Salesforce comes in, where you know, the, the key being, how do these companies find ways to connect with their customers, with their connected customers? How do they tie customer data with the product? And then the last thing I want to talk about here before uh, handing it over to Callum is that we also recognize that no one company can do it alone. There has to be an ecosystem. So by partnering with Salesforce and Heroku, we have that kind of complete business ecosystem with you know, business automation, customer data, and an app experience that's tied into an IoT platform. But there's also other partners that are important hardware partners that make the chips, the modules, the gateways that you need to connect the physical devices to the cloud, and system integrator partners that bring the expertise and the capability to build out those total solutions using all of this. So you know, another key, if you're in the audience and you're thinking about what does IoT potentially mean for your business, and you're maybe sitting where these guys were a year or two ago thinking about getting into it, these are just important criteria to think about the partner ecosystem that you're dealing with as well as just uh, technology. So every one of those guys over there, they all started with an idea, right? Some, most of those were better than this, but we've, we've heard a lot of ideas, not all of which are great. But the, the big question is, where do you start, right? All these companies had to start somewhere. And that's what we want to talk about, is how <coughs> we make it really easy to start, which is where the Zively product simulator comes in. So what you're about to see from Callum over the next 10 minutes or so is something called the Zively Product Simulator, which is built on Heroku. And essentially what this is, again, is it gives you the ability to model a physical device virtually, add data channels to it, connect those data channels over Zively, an enterprise commercial grade IoT platform, tie that data into Salesforce, orchestrate that data, create apps, and really build out the whole experience so that you can experiment, iterate, and validate what you're doing and kind of go through those iterative cycles before you're ever cutting sheet metal or molding plastic. And then when you're done, everything that you've built can be lifted and transported to a full commercial deployment. You get really high reuse. And the idea being to accelerate time to market for companies that are looking to basically make that initial foray into the IoT. So that's what you're about to see. And Callum, I'll hand it over to you. All right. Thanks, Mario. So 
what I'm about to show you is how we're going to use the Zively product simulator along with the Zively management application, Salesforce, and Heroku to build sort of a virtual connected product. So I was trying to come up with what product I would show you. I did like Mario's bike lawnmower, but I didn't you know, know if that was that relatable. I thought about toasters or generators or things like that. Most of those are already connected to the internet. But last night I was over in our IoT cabin helping to get everything set up. And I was walking out. There weren't many people around. And I said, you know what there is here that hasn't been connected is sassy. <laughs> so I'm going to use the Zively product simulator today to build the connected sassy. And so everything, when you want to get started, this is our Zively management application. And this is where we're going to start. Uh, to build our connected product, whether that's Sassy or your toaster or whatever it is that the product that you build is. Uh, and what we do is we start um, by creating a new product template. And what a product template in Zively is, is basically the virtual representation of your product. And this is how we're going to model sort of everything about it. And there's a couple different components that each model can have. One of them is what we call channels. And these things are data that is coming from your product or that you want to send to it. So these are sensors it might have, actuators it might have. So I was trying to come up with last night, what are some things we might want to track about Sassy? And I was thinking maybe how many handshakes he does per day. You'll notice that I'm going to make all of these channels time series, which means in addition to being able to send this information or get this information directly from Sassy, we're going to keep all of that information stored so that we could use it for historical analysis, we could use it for um, analytics or drawing graphs later on. So I think maybe we could also track Sassy's software levels, uh, you know, see if there's, there's anything, I'll make that time series. Um, going on with Sassy, where he needs to, um, you know, there's too much software near him. And finally, I was thinking, I saw a lot of people already taking selfies with, with uh, Sassy, so we can track those. Uh, in addition to sort of the streaming data coming from devices, Zively also lets you model metadata about the device. These are things that maybe aren't changing all the time, but that you do want to keep track of. So maybe for this, this is, you know, the costume version. Or it could just as easily be uh, you know, who the operator is. Or for your product, it could be color or power version or something like that. So now that we've created a model for Sassy, uh, let's go ahead and actually create our first Sassy device. So if you think about it, if you're familiar with the sort of Salesforce uh, object model or object ontology, a device template is kind of like a product. Uh, where we've defined this is what it is, this is a, a key piece of our system, and now each device uh, instantiation is more like an asset. Uh, and we'll see la later uh, how Salesforce can actually pull those, those native objects in. So now we've got uh, our Sassy product created. So we're going to go over to the Zively product simulator here uh, that you may have seen earlier. And we have a couple other products that have been modeled before in here. But we're going to go and start working on Sassy. So we can see he hasn't uh, been set up at all yet. So we're going to have to go into the device settings. And this is what you would do as you start building out your product to come in here um, and set this up. And what we're going to be able to do is model <laughs> uh, what's going on uh, with Sassy. But first, I figured yep. we should have some good re visual representation of Sassy here. So I found this awesome picture of him online. And we're going to add in the, the sensors that we had before so that we can create virtual values coming from Zively uh, for these sensors. So we had handshakes, selfies, and I think we had one called software. And now what the product simulator lets you do is go back and forth uh, to define how these sensors work. So you'll have a minimum and a maximum uh, for each one of these values. For Sassy, I think it's not super important, but if you wanted to model something like a binary switch or a sensor that has a specific range, like temperature or humidity, uh, this can be a useful tool for you know, making sure you keep within those values. Uh, next, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to place these on our Sassy image here so that they uh, show up on him, which you'll see in just a second. 
You can set units for each of these two, which again, depending on the type of sensors that you're using uh, or what's going on, that's something that you might want to keep track of. You know, this is a Fahrenheit temperature sensor versus Celsius or something like that. So now we can see we have our, our connected SASE, and we have our number of handshakes, our software levels, and how many selfies he's taken today. Maybe it's selfies per hour or something. <laughs> Uh, so now the product simulator you can see is showing us sort of virtual representation of what our physical product would look like, but it's also showing us a representation of what a mobile application might look like, an end user application for somebody monitoring SASE, uh, or this could just as easily be you know, something to control the lights and turn them on and off if your product was a light bulb or light switch. So let's see, this one is set for selfies. We can see, you know, as we send data in, this is actually sending data back and forth through the Zively platform in real time uh, from one Heroku application to another. So just as if this were a real mobile web application, and you can actually share this link, open it up on your mobile phone, uh, take a look at it, you would see this same information going back and forth, um, just like we see it happening on the screen here. So I think that that you know, shows hopefully how you can create a virtual representation of your device. But what this is really useful for is not just being able to see it and have this nice picture of Sassy and see the application, but you can actually start building out what you're going to do with your data once you build a physical product. Um, so to start with that, I'm going to show the Zively rules engine. And what this is, is it allows you to take the data that's coming from those streaming uh, sources we created earlier, like selfies, handshakes, and software levels, and actually do something with it. Uh, so I'm going to start by setting up a device rule for our SASE product here. And I think maybe let's you know, monitor the number of handshakes that um, SASE has every day. And or maybe it's handshakes per hour. And we'll say if it's over 75, then we want to you know, track that something's going on. We want to make sure Sassy's handlers come out and move him on to the next area after he has enough uh, handshakes for the day. Kind of worn out. So we can come in here, and we have, uh, as part of the Zively Rules Engine, as part of our integration with Salesforce and with Heroku, we have a number of rules that are built just for being used with Salesforce. So in this case, I think we're going to use the case one because um, it's easy to show. And we'll say, you know, handshake limit met or something here. And you can give it a description. These are standard Salesforce fields, which you can set, uh, you know, just like you would for anything else. And, and making this rule happen is, is as, easily as, as easy as dragging these connectors together. Um, and hitting deploy. And now this rules engine is actually monitoring all the data that's coming from SASE in real time, in this case from our virtual SASE. Um, and you know, when one of these rules is met, it will actually take this action. So I think the important thing to note here is even though I'm going to show this happening uh, with our virtual SASE here, you know, this is setting you up for building your actual physical product. I haven't created a rule you know, for just SASE 001 that's our virtual SASE here. This is for the entire SASE device template. So what that means is as you start to manufacture your physical SASEs, or we go and connect all the SASEs that are out on the floor at Dreamforce today, we can, that would apply to the same rules. So you set that up once, and then you, that business logic will stay as you move through iterations of virtual devices or iterations of hardware. Um, so let's play around with this and, uh, and increase um, the number, oh, that's selfies, the number of handshakes here. And then we uh, can go into Salesforce and we'll see if we've actually created the case for, for bringing that information in. So we'll come in here. We'll go to cases. Here's our handshake limit met. It was created just a few minutes ago. And now we're in the standard Salesforce interface. What we also just want to briefly show here, if you want more information about some of this, I know it's a lot to take in, come by the booth or go to one of our workshops later. We're showing the actual um, Zively App Exchange application, which goes in Salesforce. So attached to this case object, we have this Zively window, which is pulling in all of the information that Zively has about this specific SASE model. Um, all of those costume versions or other meta metadata fields that we created earlier. You can have the sensor data, log data directly from the devices, 
all directly in Salesforce to help the person that's consuming this case. All of that information is also available right in this uh, window within Zively. So if instead of using Salesforce, you want to view that information directly in the Zively console, you're able to do that as well. You can set more location about them. You can monitor your devices, edit your devices, update them as you decide that in addition to selfies and handshakes, you also want to put a GPS on Sassy and track GPS. You can do all of that by manipulating the device template models within Zively. So I know that was a lot of information to take in, but hopefully it gave you an overview of how you can get started with building your IoT product uh, using pretty much no code at all and the Zively, Heroku, and Salesforce ecosystems. If you want to build your own product, we are having a workshop today at 3, and I think there's another one later in the week. It's at 2 o'clock today. OK, 2 o'clock today uh, over by the IoT cabin, uh, or stop by our booth. We'll be happy to walk you through it uh, for your specific product as well. So with that, I'm going to hand things over to Abe to talk a little bit more about um, Heroku and how we're making all of this happen. You want to put the slides back up? Uh, awesome. Fantastic. What do you guys think? Pretty cool? Connected IoT end-to-end, -end, right? How easy was that? Connected simulator. Um, so Callum, uh, just kind of pulling up a, a slide here that, that shows, I think, a visual nice architecture of really what we just walked through. Um, I have a somewhat interesting perspective in that I've been with Salesforce for actually nine years. I uh, spent four and a half years on the core side, and the last four and a half years I've been with Heroku. So for those who aren't familiar with or intimately familiar with Heroku, Heroku has been around since 2007. It was the first platform as a service to run on top of AWS, which we still do today, and was acquired by Salesforce 2010. Heroku has been doing IoT really since inception, since IoT was, was kind of a thing and people wanted to start using some of these cloud primitives to be able to expose, get large data sets, and do interesting things with them. One of the challenges we've had with Roku, though, over the years is really how to handle some of the large streaming data sets and how to do the kind of end uh, edge type of activity, right? So you're talking about working, managing devices out in the field, taking, ingesting that data to then be able to do interesting things with it and really deliver business value. And that value is transaction with the customer engaging in a consumer-facing mobile app and connected into your business productivity workflows, i.e., for us, Salesforce. And that's really what we've been able to bring together and assemble here. And what's really interesting is that this isn't new for us. So Mario mentioned a number of a slew of customers in the beginning there, all of which are just about you know, 50 feet to the right of me, which I'd highly encourage you to go check out so you can see this real time. This isn't vaporware. This isn't slideware. This isn't even just a nice demo. This is real customers in the wild who are using this exact same architecture today to deliver value and results. The first one we started with was New England Biolabs. So check, definitely check those guys out. Um, and four years ago, we started on this story with Zively and being able to integrate at all the right intersection points, be able to use the technology stacks that are optimized for their different area of expertise, but integrated at the right way and the right level to deliver that end-to-end -end value. And so that's really what we've been able to deliver. What's very exciting is over the past year, we've taken that relationship to the next level. And what we've done that is by enabling Zively as an add-on partner for Heroku. So I won't go into all the, the details about it. You can learn a lot more about what being an add-on partner means for Heroku and so forth. But what it means is essentially that Zively is integrated deeply into Heroku, the Heroku runtime and Heroku app development experience, and from there into Salesforce. Really pretty killer. Nobody else in the marketplace is doing this today. If you go out there and you'll get other technology vendors, other partners, you just will not find this type of uh, capabilities available. And something that doesn't take weeks, months, years to roll out, literally in a day, in a workshop, 15 minutes, you could have your own simulator up and running, be able to start, do some ideation, and really understand where the business value is going to be for you and your organization rolling out uh, a connected product and a connected product experience that goes to end to end. Um, would you mind just flipping over to the partner app showcase real quick and actually showing uh, that uh, the the, screenshot over there or the actual showcase? Which one? Yeah, maybe oh, in the to... browser. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so I want to highlight if you actually go out to, so it's heroku.com slash partners slash uh, app dash showcase. Perfect. So if you go out to this URL, ooh, which I didn't type, partners in. plural. Whoops, whoops. Yeah, partners plural, and then you should spin that up. Um, so if you go out to this page, partners, uh, Partner App Showcase, 
And if you want to go ahead and just open your Zively's view in GitHub uh, uh, link there. So as we just talked about, what you just saw Calum go through, this is live. This is available for you today for free to get out there and try and test IoT. What this deploy to Heroku button does, it takes that code, that simulator, has that running on Heroku, using the Zively add-on to help do that orchestration, that stream processing. You don't have to go out and actually you know, buy a bunch of uh, uh, Raspberry Pis and so forth right, to get up and running. You can do that if you want, of course. But this is a very lightweight, easy way to conceptualize what IoT means to you, your organization, and start doing some of that ideation. The next thing you'll see is that Salesforce app. This is a free unmanaged package. Deploy that into your Salesforce org. Now you have basic config. You're up and running. Again, matter of minutes, matter of hours. You have a simulator yourself that you can run, take to your business, start getting some ideas going, and hopefully uh, uh, realize the same value that we're seeing with a lot of our customers out there. Um, so I hope this was exciting for you guys. It's extremely exciting for us. Um, IoT is real. We're delivering it today. Again, the, the, the range of customers you'll see all over to our right, all of them are this exact same architecture. So this is real. Um, check it out. Hopefully you're inspired. We're super inspired. And come talk to us about it. Um, on that, I'll hand it over to, uh, to Mario to uh, kind of close us off. Awesome. Am I up? So we have a few minutes for questions, about three and a half minutes. We'd love to hear questions or thoughts. Any questions out there from the audience? We even have a mic we can pass around if we need. Any questions? Anybody looking at doing an IoT product today? Anybody involved in any IoT projects? What are you doing? So I, uh, I work for Ergotron. Um, we make sit-stand workstations, but we also make a lot of products that go into the healthcare space. And one of those products we make is a powered cart that we... <clears throat> that nurses and doctors can use to bring EMR systems to the patient, yep. right? So we've got, a, we've got a lithium ion battery system. We've got a power module. We've got auto locking drawers on this product. What we need to do is we need to be able to empower the customer to one, control that via a mobile device, but we also want to be able to have that cart uh, phone home and say, I need a new battery. Um, I've got an overheating power module. I, I've got different problems. So we want to, right now we're in the process of building an app on Heroku uh, to do some of these things, and we are a Salesforce customer. So I am interested in, in, right. in, in what you're offering there, um, see if it can speed our process of our project. Yeah, yeah so, that would be great. I mean, I think you know, two things that occur to us, right, is one is, you know, we have this theme about accelerating your innovation, you know, because there's a lot of work you can do in hardware. You know, are you, are you going to use Wi-Fi? Are you going to have some geolocation by RF? You know, and all those choices you have to make in, in hardware, and that's expensive, it's time consuming, so one of the benefits here is you can essentially model all that out virtually before doing your connected hardware. But we'd love to, uh, we'd love to connect afterwards. Thanks so much. So anyways, yeah, we're really excited about that project and that, that yeah. product. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone in the audience? Here you go, you have to step up, I guess. Um, I have a question. Is it yes. a lot of work? If I have thousands of devices, do I have to m manually model each one of them? Maybe model each one. Nope, Callum, why don't you? Uh... Yeah, so I think part of, the, part of the power of what the device template does is you just create that once for each type of device. So if you have a light bulb or something like that, you only have to create the template once for that device, and then you can have tens of thousands of instantiations. And all of that typically would happen programmatically uh, on the back end. You don't have to manually go through and, and click to create each one of those end devices. I just saw you map like SASE as a particular instance, is it just for demo purpose or for like experiment? Yeah, so that was one instantiation of it, but you could use that same device template to have um, you know, multiple instantiations of the same product. Okay, thank you. I yeah. assume there's an API for people to use to populate? Yep, so you can use either the management application that I was showing, but there's also uh, open APIs for accomplishing all of the exact same things. Great, thank you. Okay. Yeah, hold on to that. So thank you, everybody. We're just about at the end of time. I think one last point around this idea of starting. So Lutron, who, again, I said earlier, makes a connected lighting system for homes. They've been in the market for, I think, a couple of years now. Lots and lots of product deployed. If you want to get a sense for when you have all the back end figured out with something like Zively and Salesforce and Heroku, how quickly you can get to market, they went to market from the time we were basically done, kind of, you know, basically a handshake and an agreement. They had shipping product four months later. 
that was shipping to their customers. So four months is an incredibly fast way to get to market when a lot of this complexity is worked out, and that's kind of our goal for, for all of you folks if you're looking to get into the IoT space. So again, thank you very much. If you're interested in doing this for yourself, check out our workshop at 2 o'clock, and thanks so much for your time. Have a great show.